Medina, and the people in Medina began to share the wealth with the Muslims of Mecca. This is what they call about sharing the wealth. This is why countries of Libya under Gaddafi was socialist. Egypt was socialist because Islam is a very socialist religion. So to, to think that Islam is conservative and Islam believes in the same God and so on and so forth. Look, the bombers, sorry, the, the massacre uh, terrorists in San Bernardino, they just today came out, they gave allegiance to ISIS. What does giving allegiance to al-Baghdadi mean? Well, they lift up their a finger, one finger, to denounce the Trinity. And this is the main thing. They're Unitarian. So they denounce the Trinity. In other words, the war is on Christianity. That's what they need to understand. The war is on Christianity. It's in the Okay, so it's ISIS versus Christianity, as the Russians are saying. The Russians are saying it like it is. The Russians are saying it's ISIS versus Christianity, which is, of course, why Obama hates Putin. But let's put that aside for the minute. Let's go back to the battle within this country. You said something that's very alarming in the last hour, Waleed. You said that if we bring in the Syrians, it's all over. We'll never, ever be able to protect ourselves. Is that true? Look at Europe. 100,000 already entered that are pro-ISIS. 100,000. That's what the estimations are. And one person, like Abu Amr al-Biljiki, can commit a massacre, can mastermind a massacre in Paris, shuts down Paris completely. So you look at San Bernardino, it was a war zone. San Bernardino wasn't just a terror attack, it was a war zone. Things were closed down. It, it really cripples down the economy. And so you have 10,000 Syrians. Look, these Syrians from a very young age, they are very much inclined to beheading. They see beheadings in the street like you go fishing. So you want to bring 10,000 of these? Well, guess what? There's going to be many, many... So, but, Waleed, what you're saying is that unless we have a right-wing revolution in the next election, and unless we get an extreme right-winger who is willing to deport people by the millions and to close down radical mosques and to root out the terrorists where they are preaching hatred, we're going to lose this country. That's what you're saying. Am I right or wrong? You're absolutely right. In fact, I talked to experts from the Middle East, even in Syria. I have an expert from Syria. Do you know who he wants to win the elections? Donald Trump. Even the righteous Arabs want Donald Trump. They know that Donald Trump is the man that could stop this stuff. They know that he could make America in a way unique and back to its success again and begin to you know, close down the borders and begin to uh, not allow student visas from countries like Syria, countries like you know, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia. Look, a Saudi Arabian passport. This is considered a friend of the U.S. So any Saudi, anybody with a Saudi passport can enter. The 9-11, you had two of the hijackers. They had Saudi passports, forged passports. So if you have a Saudi passport, you could enter with no problem whatsoever. A Saudi is viewed just as you view a Canadian. And so if the system allows an Islamist from Saudi Arabia, which is the, the bunker of the Wahhabist ideology, which created ISIS, which created Hamas, which created the Muslim Brotherhood, which created all the revolutions that you see after the Arab Spring from Tunisia to Egypt to Syria to everywhere. The war is very clear, really. The American sphere thinks that Putin is the problem. Putin isn't the problem. Putin is the solution. Putin is confronting Turkey, and I've spoken in your program about Turkey. Turkey is at the head of this ISIS agenda. Turkey is the one, not Greece. Turkey is the one that sends these infiltrations into Europe. This is why Germany have to give three billion dollars to Turkey. Merkel is in. Well, I want to ask you something. Why? Why is Merkel opening? Why is she opening the country up to so many Muslims? What is? What's going on there? Why would she do this? It's the same mentality as Obama. If you are a liberal, if you are a revolutionary mindset, you create havoc. If you create havoc and you set one sector of the society against another wait, wait, but Merkel, Merkel comes from an Eastern European communist background. Does that explain why she's doing this? Absolutely. Of course. Okay, there it is. There it is. She's Stasi-like. This woman who posed as a moderate conservative, we wake up and find out she has destroyed Germany by bringing in Muslims by the millions against the will of the German people, the same way Obama is doing to this country. And the European U Union just yesterday said that uh, Christianity is in danger in Europe. Europe is, is now not a home for Christians, according to the EU, that is bringing in the Muslims. Waleed, before you leave us, it's very important you tell the audience 
your background. It's very important they know who they're listening to because they may think that you're just a caller. Would you please explain it in a nutshell? I was a terrorist. I grew up as a terrorist in Israel. I came and to this country as a U.S. citizen. That's how easy we can come in. And I was very active in the PLO. I was very active in the Muslim Brotherhood. In fact, my mentor runs a mosque in Bridgeview, Illinois. His name is Jamal Saeed. And so I understand the intricacies of how to infiltrate, how to gain uh, support, how to uh, be active in mosques, how to the whole shebang. I became Christian in 1993. In fact, that is what became my crime when I converted to Christianity and I began to fight and I began to work with the FBI. In fact, I'm hated by everybody now. I'm hated not just by the FBI. I'm hated by the Homeland Security. I'm hated by the government. I'm hated by many. You know, so now I'm, sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure you're hated by Fox News. Have they ever had you on? I'm banned from Fox News. After, uh, oh, well, well, welcome to the club. You're in good company. <laughs> you know, you have the election coming. You know, look at the Republicans. Do you think these Republicans are any different? They're all no. on Putin. No, absolutely not. I know personally they're not. The only one who's different is Donald Trump, who's been on the show many times. I consider him to be a super honest man who's willing to say it like it is. Waleed, before you go, give people some hope. Is there any? Well, the high death toll is the only hope, unfortunately. The West will only learn through a high death toll. The higher death oh, toll, the more they will learn, and it's not going to work any other way. The system is completely corrupt. So, unfortunately, there's no good news. At the end of the tunnel, you have to have tens of thousands, maybe millions of Americans. Let's not forget, oh. I just want 10 million Americans dead. 10 million. That's a nice thought for the weekend, Ali. Thanks for making it a very pleasant Friday. Waleed Shubat, S-H-O-E-B-A-T, if you want the truth about what they're doing, how the government is enabling them, go to Shubat.com. Waleed, thank you so much, and take care of yourself. Back in a minute on The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O. Back to the Savage Nation. We're coming to the uh, last half of the last hour of this week. It's an amazing, terrible week. A terrorist attack, and the Attorney General comes out the next day and says she will prosecute with the full power of the government anyone who uses anti-Muslim speech that edges toward violence. I wake up and I hear that Bill O'Reilly, the leprechaun, claim he named the shooter first when it's physically impossible since my show precedes his by several hours and I beat him to the punch by two to three hours. Everyone knows that. And I said today that O'Reilly should pull to Brian Williams and he should uh, apologize to his audience and he should be suspended for a few days or be forced to step down like Roger Williams, uh, Brian Williams did. I mean, you say, well, that's not a big deal. Well, it is. And you say, well, we're on the same side. We shouldn't argue. We're not on the same side. O'Reilly is a, uh, a man in the media like I am, and he's on his own side. Moreover, Fox News has blacklisted me. And I've been asking CNN and MSNBC to run with this story on O'Reilly's shameful behavior. I'm asking specifically for Rachel Madcow to uh, step in and do the thing she does best, which is make a fool of herself and run both sound bites. Married to terror, author authorities investigate whether the wife radicalized the husband before California massacre. I told you yesterday she obviously did. But that may not be true. It could be a fake narrative. He could have been radicalized in his own mosque. That could be the story they want us to believe. She was the bad one. He met her in Saudi Arabia. How do we know that's true? Well, what about the six guys who were seen going in and out of her, his garage making pipe bombs? Have uh, the FBI agents tracked them down yet, or are they busy looking for Muslim hate speech? I guess the entire Southern California FBI office is, looking, is on the lookout. They have a bolo on the lookout for anyone saying anything about Muslims, not for the six pipe bombers that were going in and out of the house. Oh, my friends, we're living in very strange times, and I'm not going to let it get to me, because I heard what Walid said. It's going to plague me all weekend. It's far, far worse than even I think it is. Worse than even I say in Government Zero. That's how bad it is. So what are you going to do? We'll talk about that in a minute on the Savage Nation. All right.
right, a, uh, a so-called lawyer for one of the massacre artists is holding a press conference right now. Let's see if we can listen in on the Savage Nation. Um, and that's uh, it's a really bad situation to be misidentified as an active shooter while he was in work in L.A. County. Is, is her family Pakistani or something? Whose family? Her family. Who? Uh, Pakistani. They're Pakistani. And they moved to Saudi Arabia? Yeah. Saudi Arabia. When she was 18 or 20, um, she she went to Riyadh, uh, Saudi Arabia, to get married uh, with Saeed. Yes. Did the family see them once in one the All right, let's not listen into this garbage. If you, first of all, you got dunces in the media talking to a liar from the legal profession. So what are we going to gain from it? What's he going to say? He's an innocent boy. He's like a Boy Scout, a Muslim Boy Scout. Saeed Farouk didn't do it. That body armor you saw, the machine guns you saw, the dead bodies you saw, deny it. None of it's real. What's real is what I'm saying because I'm a forked ton lying piece of garbage with a law degree. That's all. Believe me. Look at, look at the morons in the media flocking around this low-life, bottom-feeding lawyer. Look at this. Where'd they dig him up from? What law school did this, this guy go to? Look at them running with the microphones into the house of terror. A lawyer opens his mouth. No, no, he didn't do anything. He's an innocent victim. Well, what about her? She's an innocent victim. So who did it? Not them. It was really right-wingers. It was white people who did it, white Christians who did it, and then they trun trundled up those evil racist police, trundled up this poor, newlywed Muslim couple, put handcuffs on them, hogtied them, and machine gun in their, machine gun them in their, in their car. That's the kind of country we're living in. Next question, please. Please, tap water, you're next. Dribble out the rust from your pipes, tap water. What a country we're living in. No one stands up to these liars. I'd rip this lawyer to pieces right in front of my eyes. Verbally, of course. Uh, verbally, of course. I said, aren't you ashamed that you're a walking human being lying like this? And then let's see the real lawyer come out, the real human being underneath that facade. How could you stand there and say things like this when the whole world saw what would happen? What a disgrace to be a cop today to have to put up with this. Can you imagine how the cops are boiling mad? Listening to these rat lawyers and these medias. Ooh. Okay, my friend. The enemy within. The enemy within. The enemy within. So it'll turn out workplace violence. They weren't really the shooters. They were innocent Muslims, and uh, it was a conspiracy by right-wingers to make it look like Muslims. They planted the Quran in the house. They planted the ISIS propaganda in the house. Uh, they planted the uh, pizza in the house. I, I mean, the, any anything you want to make up now. What about the victims? How can a lawyer speak like this with the victims' families uh, still wiping the blood off themselves? All right, look, you want to talk about any of these topics, we can do this. We know what the problem is. The problem is the hunter running America. We know the radicalization is occurring because of the radical hunter. That is running the country, period, and end the story. So where does that leave us as the people? The only question we're asking is, what the heck should we do? You're saying, come on, Michael, we agree with you. You're making good sense. We know that there's a nightmare after this heavily armed Muslim couple stormed the county office building and gunned down 14 people, and the FBI basically is two days later than you are. You called it a terrorist act the day it happened after you put the, the pieces together. You read the name of the shooter. Before O'Reilly did, before anybody else did. No one's seen a picture yet of Tashfeen Malik, wife of gunman Saeed Rizwan Farouk. Why is there no picture of her? Because this country is so psychotic that it led her into the country on a fiancé visa wearing a full burqa where you can't even see the slits of her eyes. That's an insane nation. Insane nation, totally insane. A sick nation from top to bottom. Then we wake up, the Attorney General, instead of saying, look, I may be a liberal, but I'm not going to put up with this uh, blah, 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 and I'm going to be on the side of those of you who are uh, concerned about this, and we're going we're gonna to root out any mosque that's preaching hatred. We're going to find any preachers of hate, and we're going to throw them out of the country. And who goes overseas to Syria and comes back, we're, we're ripping out their passports. She didn't say that. Now, wait, it gets even better. The director of Los Angeles CARE, you know who CARE is, C-A-I-R. You heard from Waleed who they really are, haven't you? It's eerie. It's just eerie. Says that America is, is, is partly responsible for the terrorism. This is Hossam Alush in clip number 11 on the Savage Nation. Are you ready to go on this, Jim? 11.
As we speak, ISIS 11. has killed 95% of the victims of 